All right, welcome to Changes in Dimensions Level 2. Now, in this very first example, we want to find the new volume of the prism below when both the height and the base are reduced by a scale factor of one-third. Now, I want you to notice what's a little bit different about this one is now instead of changing one dimension, we're actually going to be changing two dimensions. We'll be changing both the height and the base. And if you wanted to think about this, you could look firstly, you know, what should we always do? We should always shade our base. So I'll come over here, I'll shade my base. How do I know it was the triangle that was the base? Well, we see that there's only one, two triangles, and whatever shape you have twice is always assumed to be your base. So we look at it, and essentially what we're saying is if we were to cut this height in half, and we were to cut this base in half, how would that affect the volume? And I, I misspoke, not a half, but a third. So if we were to cut this into a third and a third, how would that affect the overall volume? Well, let's go back to, um, first let's find the volume. And so we'll use our formula. We know volume is the area of the base times the height. And let's see. We just shaded this triangle, and so let's go ahead and find the area of that triangle. Let's see. We know that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. And if we are going to go ahead and start manipulating that, well, using your cell phone calculator, it's a little bit easier to change one half into 0 0.5. Well, now I look at where we shaded. Let's see. What is the base of that triangle? Well, it looks like it's going to be 5 inches long times, and we know the height of that triangle is going to be 6, and so we can just go ahead and multiply those three things together. And I know that 5 times 6 is 30, and I know that multiplying by 0.5 really just divides by 2. So let's see, what's 30 divided by 2? Well, that's just going to come out to be 15. In this case, we'd say that our area is 15 inches squared. Well, that's the area of the base. And so when I go back to my volume formula, I now know the area of my base is 15 times. And we'd ask ourselves, well, what's our height? We always want to imagine like, hey, if we stood this prism up on its base, so this now this shaded region here becomes the bottom, well, we know that it would be 8 inches tall. And so, of course, we can do 15 times 8. Let's see. Off the top of my head, I guess that'd be 120, but let's do 15 times 8 just to be sure. And yes, 15 times 8 is 100 and, whoa, that's bad. 120 inches cubed. Now, what does this mean for our problem? It means that our original volume is going to be 120 inches cubed, but what we're trying to find is the new volume. Now, I gave you all kind of this funny formula in the last one where we have our new volume is always equal to our original volume times our scale factor to the number of dimension changes. And I know that looks scary at first, but, but what are we really saying? Well, we're saying, hey, we're going to have a new volume when we take our original volume of 120, and we're going to multiply that by our scale factor. We know that's one-third. And here's the big key. How many changes are there? Well, we have the height and the base, and so that's going to be two changes. Okay, now how does that work for us? Well, we have our new volume is going to be the original times. And if you think all the way back to Algebra 1, we know that if you have one-third squared, it means that one-third is really there twice. It's really one-third times one-third. And so whenever we have two changes, it seems we're going to take our volume and multiply it by our scale factor, not once, but now twice. And so this will be, our new volume will be 120 times. And we know that when multiplying fractions, we always multiply top by top and bottom by bottom. And so 1 times 1 will be 1 over, and 3 times 3 will be 9. And if you'll simply do 120 times 1 ninth, which is really the same as dividing by 9, it turns out we would get our new volume is equal to 13.33. And of course, in this case, inches cubed. All right. Let's move on now to our second example. All right. So now we have example two, uh, where we have the height and base edge of the hexagonal prism below are going to be reduced to 
one half of their original values. And we want to know what would the new volume be. Okay, so we look at it, we see we have a hexagonal prism. Our first thing we always want to do with a prism is we want to shade the base, absolutely. So I come down here and I want to shade, shade, shade away. There's my base. And so let's go ahead and start by finding the volume of this prism. Well, we know that volume of a prism can always be written out as the area of the base times the height. And so we're going to go ahead and write volume equals. And so we shaded this hexagon, and it turns out we need to know what is the formula for the area of a hexagon. And you know what? Let me erase that out here. What I wanted to write instead is I actually want to write, hey, we want to know what is the area of a hexagon, or in this case, remember, we'll call that a regular polygon. So the formula for a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon is a regular polygon, and it's always going to be one half times the apothem times the perimeter of the base. Okay, and I'll abbreviate this as the area of a regular polygon. So if we're using our phone calculators, of course you all know this, we want to change one half into 0 0.5 times and when I look over here it's kind of hard to see since I shaded it but they were drawing this arrow to show us the apothem was six and our perimeter well we see that one side length is eight and how many sides do we have we have eight times one two three four five six now let's see eight times six well it appears that, that would be forty eight well now in order to find the area of this regular polygon we're going to have to go ahead, go to our calculators. We'll do 0.5 times 6 times 48. And it turns out that gives us actually a pretty familiar number, 144. And in this case, we'll say inches cubed. Now that's the area of the base. So we found our capital B. All right, so we have the volume is equal to 144 times. And when I look at this, it's very apparent. Our height is this right there and we have a height of 12 inches. So our volume will be 144 times 12, grab the calculator, and that would wind up being 1,728. And don't forget, when it's volume, it's always gonna be inches cubed, meaning that should have been inches squared there. So our new volume, or I'm sorry, our original volume is 1,728. Now, this will bring us back to this funky equation. And look, if you, if you feel a little hesitant in setting this up, that's okay. What we're really saying, just in, in normal everyday words, we're saying, hey, we have our original volume, 1,728, and we're going to multiply this by our scale factor of 1 half. However, we have to multiply it by a half by the number of dimensions that we're changing. So in this case, we're changing both the height and the base edge, so we're changing two dimensions. Now what does this really mean? Well, once again, we can write it out as our new volume will be 1,728 times. But we see here, thinking back to Algebra 1, when we have an exponent of 2, it really means the 1 half is there twice. And we're multiplying by the 1 half twice because we're changing two dimensions. All right, so now we have our new volume and which is 1,728 times. And we know that to multiply fractions, you always have to go top by top, which would be 1 times 1, which is 1, and bottom by bottom, and we know that 2 times 2 is 4. So if we want to figure this out, we have to multiply 1,728 times 1 fourth, and that comes out to be actually a pretty nice number. We will get there, our new volume is 432 inches cubed, or one-fourth of the original volume. All right. Well, thank you all so much.